purchase your tracks today.
the fucking flex.
and I'm pleased to announce my brand new talk show, The Coach Kelly Speaks Show. It's going down each and every Monday at 5 p.m. starting on April the 3rd on Listen Vision Live. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Coach Kelly Speaks. And you can also visit my website for more information, www.coachkellyspeaks.com. See you April the 3rd.
doing it that, that, that way. It's just different. Kelly and today we have an awesome awesome show I'm so excited it was a little moment going getting here but I ran for my life for this opportunity so today we can have someone that is very close and dear to me my mentor um, at the age of 16 years old I was looking through some hair books and I saw um, some pictures and I put it on my vision board and not even knowing that one day it would be my mentor so I want to just to um, Say thank you for joining. I can't wait. Where am I looking? <laughs> I want to tell everybody that's watching out there, thank you so much for your Facebook shares, posts, and everything like that. Thank you for following my journey. It is with great pleasure to introduce Ms. Sharita Matthews, now Davis, to the Coach Kelly Show. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me for my very first show my inaugural show it wouldn't even be fitting if I didn't have you because it's been there for since the beginning even before I even met you I knew of your work and it inspired me and it still inspired me to this day so how did <laughs> this brand Sharita Matthews because Every time I looked at the, the pictures, it was always on the front cover. Like, he was always on the front cover. Um, how did this brand start? Like, just, just share something about just the brand, Sharita Matthews. Well, hi, everybody. Um, first, Kelly, I have to say I'm so excited <laughs> for you. You know, I can't ever just talk about me without um, 
saying thank you for the opportunity and just I'm, I appreciate the honor that you always give me. Um, this brand, this word called brand is new to me. <laughs> 25 years ago, we didn't call this branding. 25 years ago, it was just consistency in business, and that's how you became a household brand. So early on from childhood, my family taught me the importance of my name. My name did not just belong to me but it belonged to my family. So from a toddler, they say I always introduce my first and last name. No one could just call me Sharita. Everybody had to say Sharita Matthews. Okay, okay. Now, you know, I have to add the Davis <laughs> to it. So my husband knows on the weekends I'm Sharita Davis, but through business, just being consistent with what I attributed, connected myself with and put out consistent content. And now they call that branding. It, yeah. it just was a no-brainer. It was yeah. like make sure that you valued everything you participated in and you gave your best. And my name always brought a certain amount of excellence because I always gave excellence with it. So that was branded back then. So everything looked cohesive. I had my cards, everything. So I would say, you know, just whatever your brand is, make sure it's consistent. Make sure people can read it. Um, now like, oh, she's this, this, all over the place. Nothing matches. It's like Doritos label is the same no matter what color the bag is yeah, right yeah. so it's the same thing but 25 years ago we didn't call it brand. right right, right, right. <laughs> because you know at one point i mean now it's social media you have filters you have edits and you know early on in my career you know it was you just had your business call and you just had your brand so how do you how do you keep a consistent successful brand not say yes to everything I, I never said yes to everything. I think people are so eager to be in business and to be recognized, they don't even pay attention to the quality of the product they attach their name to. I've always been known as um, tough. I've always been known to she don't play, but that's fine. You know what I mean? Because with that, bought the excellence that people knew I stood by. So, I mean, it's great to be honored, and it's great for people to want you everywhere, but if it doesn't line up with the vision that I'm trying to portray, I can't be connected to it because that's a part of my brand. That's what branding is. Don't be so eager to participate into any and everything. And today, you know, I'm excited. Everybody wants to be entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs were raised. It just wasn't given. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's so cliche-ish, you know. It's kind of disheartening to a veteran because we really, the foundation is what really created your brand. Not just because you have a couple of followers or you could afford some business cards or things like that, but just make sure you, whatever you attach yourself to, that it represents your brand and quality. And don't be so eager for a, a yes all the time. Yeah. Say no. Yeah. yeah. So what was that um, moment in your life that you decided that you wanted to, you know, start your own business? Um... Well, <laughs> being very strong-headed, um, you know, I've also always knew what I liked. So um, I also was taught if it wasn't something you really like, create it. And that's how it what made me start an environment I want to work in. Um, I work with some great teams through the years, and I love them. And I love working with teams. However, as I just grew as a person, mentally, spiritually, everything um i needed an environment that was conducive for who i am and who i'm becoming mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that that and this and this and i still love working with brands and other people but um i just say sometimes you have to create what it is you're looking you know we all are called to be an answer here on the earth and my my business is my answer for me mm -hmm, okay so how do you just with everything it's just like everything is just so fast paced and you know, you can be just pulled in different directions. How do you manage and, like, live in each moment? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's an ongoing um, daily confession okay. and something that you strive for daily. Some Sometimes you get it all the way right and sometimes you don't. So um, constant self-introspects of yourself. First of all, write it down. Whatever it is that your vision and your goal is, whatever it is, I say write it down. And the reason why I say write it down is so that you have something to go back to so that you can look at because a lot of times opportunities come and we tend to deviate from it. And it may be good, but are you accomplishing the things that's on your list? What was your goal? 
What was Sharita's goal? What was Kelly's goal? Not what was my goal or what was my husband's goal? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because mm -hmm. that'll help you come back and say, okay, I got too far off. Let me go back so I can accomplish these things. Because it's great. It's just like kids. Um, I used to tease my father all the time, give my kids all these extra work. But if it didn't go with the homework from the school, it didn't count for much. Mm -hmm. So you have to stick to what counts. No. And just having your priorities. Yeah, having your priorities. You got to regroup. I have to regroup daily. Yeah. You know, and sometimes then I've pulled back a lot in the r recent years. And you kind of, I never thought I would get stuck in a rut because we pulled back. But you got to remember, the industry and the world is forever changing fast. So if you don't want to get left behind, you have to catch up mm -hmm. or keep keep the young ones around yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and so how about... Um, because you have a lot of people that are they're at that that point in their career where they want to do something different and trying to define your next. Like, how could you, what would you say to our audience and finding the next or the finding that that next move or is it your faith or like how how can you help someone out there that's like, is it the right time? What should I do? You know. Well, for me, faith starts begins and is consistent with everything I do so it should always start with your faith um, and then just faith in yourself because sometimes when you're not producing um, you feel like you're getting like you feeling like you're losing yourself so you have to have faith in yourself as well but I would say um, still just find be authentic mm -hmm. stop trying to look like now with social media I wouldn't know like we've been connected for how many years? You 16. I don't even know the age difference. Now. <laughs> but anyway, but if it wasn't for social media, we wouldn't know all of what each other is doing. And I yeah. think everybody is just distracted because, ooh, like we're in this fabulous studio. Somebody else had a studio before. They didn't have all this. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah, everybody yeah. has something, but then it stays true and authentic to what it is that you'll do and then continue to add and use your faith to add to that. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. see what you could do. To me, it's what comes naturally and organically. I think people are forcing entrepreneurship ideas in ways it wasn't even natural for them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean stretch yourself, mm -hmm. but stay authentic to your brand. Mm -hmm. Stay authentic to you and then add creative ways. Because, yeah, we do need our niche, but let's face it, nothing is new under the sun. So whether right. you believe the Bible or not, it's the truth. Yeah. Somebody had the idea before yeah. you, but now yeah. let me make it my own. But when you're authentic mm -hmm. to what your goal is, again, if you wrote that down, okay, <laughs> then that helps you. If you write it down and you revisit it, and then you ask, using your faith, creative ways to add to that, mm -hmm. you know. But don't, don't, you can't get distracted. And I fell, I'm one of those, I can't believe I fell into that trap too, looking, because social media is overwhelming. It is very it is so overwhelming much. because <laughs> it's so many people. You know, it's yeah. so many you know, it's 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 so many programs like you know how to build your social media, how to you know you can buy followers. I mean, yeah, like it's, so it's just so many different things that you can do, and then so you got so many frequencies coming at you. So when you was talking about the you know just keeping your authenticity and saying that you know what I'm 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 gonna build my brand the way I've been doing it for the last twenty five years. That's yeah. key because it's just a lot of stuff going on. So It is, and it, it can be overwhelming, and it can cause insecurity where there was no insecurity. Everything I've done up to 25 years was effortless for me. So I get God wants to stretch me. I get that. But I think I added, I add to the frustration by having so much awareness around me. So sometimes you have to pull back. I have, like my husband tells me, I have different friends that tell me, like I had to pull back a little off of social media and, okay. and everything. It's like when you looking for that house, mm -hmm. you got all your house stuff picked out and you go mm -hmm. pick it out and then that, you still looking at houses and now you got new options. So it's just too much. Yeah. I just think you have to um, stay true to what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in the power of mentorship, because mentorship for me, it meant that I was going to find somebody, you know, because my, my pastor always says, you know, to hang with those who have your answer and get away from those who have your problem. So I remember him doing this study on faith and him saying that he found his mentor. He located his mentor. He didn't even know him, mm -hmm. but he located him. And so for me, the power of mentorship meant I have to find somebody and I have to follow them and then 
eventually I got connected with you. Mm -hmm. And it's like God ordered all of the steps for you to become my mentor. I called you my mentor before it even happened. Yes. <laughs> I was like stalking her. <laughs> And, it, and I'm so glad I did. No, you just passionate in a yeah, different way. I, I'm <laughs> passionate, but yeah, it could have been like, this little girl just keep following me everywhere. But for me, it was worth it mm -hmm. because what I got is, it was a setup because I'm thinking, oh, you know, learn about hair. But I learned about being a woman in the process. I learned about just being, just having tough skin. And, you know, now I can stand on my own two feet and, and, and just deal with it all and just master it. So the power of mentorship for me, and that's why I wanted my first show to have my actual mentor because no one is self-made. And you got so many people out here, hashtag, you know, I'm I grinding, <laughs> you know, I'm self-made, you know, I'm out here, I'm a boss <laughs> chick. But it. there's so many different people that God will orchestrate to go into your life. And it's, and it's, it's just, it's, it's Bible, <laughs> if I can say that. Um, but a lot of people want to take those shortcuts. They don't want to serve. They don't want to sweep their floor. You know, I had someone to come into the salon. Um, I, I, I had someone to come into the salon to in, intern, mm -hmm. you know, uh, about a month ago. And she came in and she was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm getting ready to tape you doing extensions. And, and I was like, no, you got to sweep first. You know, and so, so many people want to take the... They want, they want the elevator, time. you know, straight up. So what? So a person that, because, you know, there's people that's out there right now that's watching the show that say, you know, I feel like I, I, this is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been at it for a long time. What would you tell that person, just some type of encouragement that you can speak into their lives? First, make sure um, what it is is who you really are, not someone else's idea put in your head. Make sure it's for you first. A lot of people will um, do stuff because people say, oh, you're just good at it. Everyone thinks their gift is just something they're naturally good at. That's true to a degree, but that may not be what you're called to do. There's okay. a difference from a gifting and a calling, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, I'm gifted in um, being a visionary, but I need help with that in that I'm not good administratively. So in that gift, even having a gift, you may not be equipped to do everything. So then you have to find resources and people to help bring you, you know, fully into who you're supposed to be. Because you can get discouraged. Because I'm not administratively sound, mm -hmm. I'm behind in a lot of stuff. That can be discouraging, okay. right? Okay. And in that, that'll call lack of production. Because I can't do it. Okay. You know what I mean? But I'm like, okay, God. Now, you know I'm good at this. Now, you need, but you have to open your mouth. You have to open your mouth, and you have to look for resources. Get a group of people like like yourself. Like, you called me a mentor before I even knew. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, just find people. And for me, mentorship, I never had a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I could glean from people and other people. But find somebody who's doing what you already did. Don't be afraid to ask. I think um, with social media, you do see a lot of networking, but you see a lot of competition, too. And people aren't really, really getting that hands-on from people. People give you that surface. Nobody giving nobody the Bush's baked beans. I ain't asking no. you for your Bush's baked beans. But you know, be they true, be a authentic. Picture, you know, and it, it's like, you know, you go to conferences and they say that, you know, I'm a millionaire, you could be a millionaire too, and you go to them after the conference and they say, buy my program, and they don't want to really share that recipe with you. It's just like, well, you know, whatever. But the That's consistent a... person will get it because you, you've been around me. You see people just because, like your intern, just because you come don't mean you earn the position yeah. to everything that I'm privy to. Wow. Like, you have to show me. My son said he wanted to be a cloth be in clothing. I hooked him up with a local designer. Go thread his needles. Go do different things. But they want to already be stitching patterns. This mm -hmm. generation of millennials has to learn foundation. Foundation. You know what I mean? And that's a, it's a difference. Like, I'm grateful for the longevity. Some people just want to be a one-hit wonder. It depends on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So with the millennials, a lot of them just like, I just want to be known. Mm -hmm. But I want to be lasting. Wow, lasting. So identify what it is your, your, your purpose is. And know that every business has highs and lows. Don't be afraid to regroup. I'll call you up and find me another little millennial style. I'll call different people, <laughs> which is a little different for me. Mm -hmm. That's different. 
for me to, um, you know, but everybody has to find somebody they could kind of brainstorm with or off of. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Sharita, for being a part of this. Um, I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) I'm happy for you, I'm just so excited. I think that this is just a great opportunity to just really just show the ins and out of the realness about business and not just so much, you know, the show and um, because social media feeds narcissists and that's like a quote that they say, people that self-absorb, people Mm -hmm. that may not have as much substance, they gravitate to that and it's like that's their platform. But for this show, I want to um, just talk to you guys and encourage you guys that No matter where you are in business, we are here for you. Um, You can email us any of your questions at coachkellyspeaks at Mm gmail.com. We will answer them um, on our next show. I'm so excited about my next show. Um, We have Natasha Mayo, who is the execution coach, Mm -hmm. and she also has a great fitness program. And also we have Breland Bowman. She will be here she um, has a new talk show, and she's phenomenal, a phenomenal young lady who is just doing great things for the kingdom. And so I can't wait to see you guys next week on the Coach Kelly Show. Yes. Thank you, guys. Great. <laughs>